Hello, in this video I'm going to explain the, uh, what is happening on this uh, payload versus range curve for a typical uh, commercial aircraft. So we have three segments of the curve. There's a horizontal segment where the payload is constant up to some certain range. Then the payload decreases at up to a certain point and then it decreases more steeply. So what's happening in each of these regions? Well, at first, if we want to increase range, we need to carry more fuel, of course, but that doesn't necessarily mean changing anything about the payload because um, there's a structural limit to payload. This could be in terms of the structural weight, but more likely it's in terms of volume, right? So there's only so much stuff that there's room for in the airplane. So on this first section of the curve, um, from O to A, the payload is constant um, because the maximum takeoff weight is increasing because we're carrying more and more fuel to increase range and this happens until we hit the maximum takeoff weight. Then we hit the second segment of the curve here. We're essentially trading off fuel for payload to be able to increase range. So if we want to be able to fly farther we have to decrease how much stuff we are carrying and that will allow us to carry more fuel um, in order to be able to fly further. Somewhere along here, we'll probably hit the maximum passenger load um, on, on this curve, and this would be sort of the maximum distance that you could sort of fly the aircraft in a uh, typical sort of passenger-dominated commercial application. Um, but that probably would happen before you hit um, the limit of this segment of the curve. What's happening at section B is that there's no more room in the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks are full. So we can't reduce the cargo any further, or we can't uh, trade off fuel and cargo any further. So at this point, we can't add fuel. Um, so it'd be we're at maximum fuel capacity, and if we want to increase range further, the only thing we can do is keep reducing payload to reduce the aircraft's weight. And by doing that, of course, we were, because the, the lift to drag ratio of the aircraft doesn't change, we can reduce the amount of drag required and therefore um, the amount of thrust that needs to be produced and therefore the fuel burn rate. So at the maximum fuel capacity we can just start decreasing payload and you can see that this ends up being a pretty inefficient trade-off because this drops off very steeply and eventually in the very limit we get to what we call a, a repositioning flight configuration where the payload is zero right? and this is the maximum possible range that you can fly the aircraft. So full fuel tanks, zero payload um, and that's, uh, you can see in this particular case, roughly du uh, almost doubles the range versus the uh, max sort of design payload range, which is what we call range R1. Of course, if you're an owner of a commercial aircraft, this is something you never want to do because it means that you're not making any money on this flight. Hopefully that's a more helpful explanation of what's going on in this plot.